Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm Francie, and we're joined today by Kyle, and we have a bit of, you know, drama that we're going to cover. Uh, so tell me, Kyle, yesterday you noticed something was going on with e the public EV charging network. Specifically, we were seeing a trend. Tell me what that was. Yeah, major system meltdown, I think, is the best way to put it. It's not a insignificant issue what happened almost every abb dc fast charger in our entire country seemingly just went offline uh, that took down entire charging networks the entire 7-eleven charging network went offline the entire circle k charging network got disconnected a huge portion of ev go just vanished from the map and went offline and so that First of all, I was like, I've never seen a problem affect multiple charging network operators. Um, and, you know, through our rate your charge updates, we figured it out reading between the lines because so many of our viewers and drivers are tagging us for their charging experiences. It's great to get the raw data. And I was chatting with Ryan and we're like, what the heck is going on here? And we're like, holy smokes, this is like only affecting ABB chargers. So I even here in my town, as an example, I just looked, okay, I know what ABB chargers there are. And I was like, our ABB EV go station is offline, but the Delta unit literally across the street working great, totally functional. So I drove over to the ABB charger, um, you know, the EV go one, the charger had no idea anything was wrong. The screen shows completely normal. I put in my credit card. It says you're unauthorized to charge. I tap my EV go card. I'm unauthorized to charge. I try and activate with the app, says you're offline. And I actually have a whole out of spec reviews video coming, talking about how serious of a problem this was. And so I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. So, you know, we have friends in the industry, of course. So I'm texting them. And I'm like, do you know what the heck is going on? And everyone's like, oh my God, I don't know what. And like, we were just kind of all finding this out together. And I thought, okay, maybe it's a glitch in the system. It'll come back pretty soon. I think it lasted 12 or more hours of just chargers being offline from one hardware manufacturer. And across the country, you know, it wasn't a localized issue and it also wasn't localized to one, like you said, one charging network. So um, if you were at a charger and it was saying you're unauthorized to charge, also that that error doesn't really give you any insight into, is it my problem? Oh, is there something wrong with my account that I can't charge? Is this my problem to solve? But no. So let's get, get a picture of actually what this problem means. So we're finding that there's a trend. It seems to be the ABB charging stations. What does that mean? What can we kind of take from that? Yeah, I think we've got a pretty clear understanding just from reading between the lines and understanding how different charge point operators implement their chargers as to what happened. And, uh, you know, none of this is is confirmed at the moment. We have, of course, reached out to the charge point operators that were affected and we have reached out to ABB. We got a couple responses back from charge point operators, but nothing from ABB, radio silence. Again, it happened overnight, but you're literally leaving people stranded for 12 hours that get into the office and fix the problem and start communicating uh, that something is going on. No public announcements from ABB at the time of this recording, which I like the people at ABB. We've done stuff with them. Like I know them. They're great people, but holy smokes, this is a like you know, level 12 issue and just no response, nothing. It's So that's the craziest part to me. The second craziest part to me is we know there was not a hardware malfunction. We know the chargers were operating just fine because at the time of this recording, everything's back online and it's good. Um, so we know it's not a hardware issue. It wasn't like they deployed a software update that took the chargers down. Um, and we also know that different charge point operators have different fallback procedures. So for example, EV go, it was, I was unable to charge at all. The one thing I thought would have been kind of interesting is if I had done auto charge on a charger that I had already used with auto charge on, because technically I think there may have been some saved logic in that communication. Um, and it may have let the car charge. But I had my Rivian that we couldn't get set up on auto charge on EVgo the other day because it doesn't work and uh, or didn't work in our case. So that I couldn't try that. Um, 
and different, tra- you know, so like EV go was like, Oh, they're completely offline. Seven 11 completely offline. Every seven 11 Tara 184 ABB charger, just, just not able to work at all. Interestingly, circle K because we're friends with the people that run the circle K network, they're EV drivers who understand that you need to charge cars regardless of anything else. The purpose of a charger is to charge a car. They actually switched to free vend mode. And by default, when the chargers lose connection, they just don't bill. And uh, my understanding, I don't actually know how that works on the back end, but if I were Circle K in this case, again, I have truly no information on this, but if I were Circle K, I would go after ABB, right? And be like, you got to pay for all the charging we just gave away for free because uh, you know that should be written into a contract somewhere. Um, what's your yeah. impression? free vend versus not being able to charge. I think like you said, like being able to provide that service that people need, that people don't experience with combustion engine cars and gas stations. You know, if there's an out of order one, you go to the next nearest one, unless you're in the middle of nowhere. But I think that it brings up the question is what is the backup here when things go down unexpectedly and it is you know, across the network, across the nation, there has to be a backup. And I think free vend is definitely an option. People are still able to charge. You're not able to, you know, collect that revenue right then and there, but build it into the backup plan as well. Yeah. Whether it's connecting it from or collecting it from the uh, party at fault or whatever it is, you know, whatever that business agreement needs to be, but to be able to provide reliable charging, you have to have a backup solution, not just go offline error codes that don't communicate an actual issue to the customer where they don't know what's going on, but be there and provide a solution for customers who need to charge their EV to get places. It brings up again another reason why folks are can doubt the EV change is because, well, the chart, look, look at this, the chargers go down for 12 hours overnight and there's not a solution. We're not able to charge um, except for, yeah, I think that that is a good solution. So this brings up the question of risk management. How can these public charging networks build better risk management m- management plans in? And so from what you've learned of studying these, talking to the experts, talking to the charging networks, where do you think they should be focusing their energy so that when unexpected disasters happen like this, they can have a, a good, effective response? Yeah, well, it's really simple in my impression. Your job is to provide energy right? You're, you're building chargers to charge cars and you have to, the problem is I know so many people in this industry that are responsible for charging networks. And I'm not going to call anyone out publicly on this podcast, but that don't drive electric. And this is a clear bright as day, you know, uh, understanding that these are not EV drivers here that understand charging a car is the top priority. It's the prime directive of the charger is to charge. That means defaulting to free vent. Truly, the entire night looked like the apocalypse. This is the EV Connect app where they have a bunch, not all, but a bunch of ABB DC fast chargers hooked up to it. All those zeros mean those chargers are offline. So that's just the Northeast right there. Just dead chargers. It's not, we're not talking one charger. We're talking hundreds, thousands of chargers across multiple networks that were completely pulled the plug on. Not every DC fast charger from ABB went offline. And so I think I've figured out what's going on. And I can't confirm this because ABB hasn't called us back. Don't know why, um, you know, but but we're still making the podcast. So I'm going to make a prediction. I think it was the ABB chargers that were implemented to use the built-in cellular connection from the unit. For example, I know for uh, for sure that um, Electrify America ABB chargers were operational, no impact to their service whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I also know that Electrify America uses their own sort of cellular contract antenna connection into the back end separate from ABB. And so I think with pretty high level of certainty that it was something to do with the phone plan or the connection to the ABB backend system that just completely, you know, went offline. And like, it could be as simple as like ABB didn't pay the phone bill or, you know, who knows, I don't know, or they were hacked. 
It's very possible that there was an attack on the system, but like, where's the redundancy for these things? The, the, what really opens my eyes here is just how vulnerable and susceptible we are to cyber attacks, oversight, and the fact that there is no backup plan when any little thing goes wrong. The chargers just, you know, they either derate, they shut off, they lose connect, whatever it is. There's no like protection mode or planning for future fault states. Mm -hmm. And so the failure modes of these chargers are just like, unless everything is perfectly operational, they just shut off and don't work. And honestly, um, it's really a shame because for large charging companies, if you have a dip in system performance, like we saw from last night, the few charging sessions of free energy that they would have to give out is totally not worth the cost of dealing with the bad PR they're going to get from us and other YouTubers and journalists and the articles that I know that are already being written about this right now for large publications. Um, you know, and I think that's props to Circle K here as they were the only ones we found that defaulted to free vend. Now, we've also talked to actually Electrify America about this. And when they lose connection or have an issue, we know their chargers default to free vend, which is very cool. And uh, I think that's very commendable of their network, actually. But wow, what a disaster that uh, we just got inundated with Rate Your Charge updates. We, of course, issued an alert on Rate Your Charge Twitter saying if you're heading to an ABB charger, you know, please don't expect to charge. You can read all the comments on that post. People saying, hey, I really needed to charge. It didn't work to other people just going to find out if they could get a charge on an ABB charger throughout, um, you know, September 26, 2023. It was, uh, it was crazy. So it also shows that redundancy is needed. We should do a whole podcast on how to build a resilient charging network from an energy side, from a connection side, and have backup plans in place for everything. Um, but we have to make the podcast on this because we are one little hack or issue away from just the entire EV charging network. And I mean, cross networks, cross charge point operators from just going down. I mean, it really is eye opening to how serious the situation is. It is. It shows the fragility that should absolutely not be here. It should be really resilient. Um, it should be able to take, you, you know, there's a lot of ways to diversify things to build in the resiliency. And so hosting a podcast on all those could be really helpful because there's a lot of things to consider here. And there's parts of building resiliency into your network that maybe wouldn't even have been applicable to this certain aspect where of this problem, which seems to be that maybe the telecommunications behind things. I mean, we're not exactly sure why this happened, but there are many aspects. And sometimes people can argue, well, just, you know, diversify the types of chargers. But we saw that it wasn't necessarily all ABB, but certain ABBs. So Right. It yeah. had to do with the implementation of how the ABB charger was put in it. My impression is if you just buy one off the shelf, if you buy 20 or 30 of them, if you're a utility, if you're 7-Eleven, if you're Circle K, if you're just buying the chargers and, and trying to work your network around that package, then that package is what seemingly let everyone down. And of course, we're going to update this. And of course, we're going to issue another uh, podcast as soon as we hear from anyone that can speak on the record about what happened. But uh, to be totally clear, the facts are starting yesterday afternoon, every ABB charger that seemingly uses the native connection built into the charger went offline. And uh, only one charge point operator seemed to have a plan in place to charge cars. And that's a real shame. Um, that I mean, great for them. <laughs> it shows like, okay, differentiation of who's running charging networks but like Definitely. just eye opening that like even EV go had no communication to me as a driver rolling up to a charger or how to, you know, give me any clues as to what's going on other than the app just saying it's offline. But if that was the charger I was heading to and it just died crazy and it's like the charger works, just take the $5 in electricity I was going to spend and give me a good experience. Like it's not that expensive to default to free VEN. And honestly, it should be built in the contract. If I was buying a bunch of chargers that that gets reimbursed by whoever is causing the fault, whether it's the utility company, whether it's the hardware manufacturer and uh, you know, or, or if it's a software backend thing, it doesn't matter to me, but someone should be held responsible. And in this case, I think we can be pretty sure it wasn't the charge point operators uh, that that um, 
you know, should be hold, held responsible for this one. That's what I can see too. And it'll be really interesting to hear what the CPOs, what the networks have to say about this. You know, typically they keep their cards pretty close to their chest, but this is their customers. You know, they, they really harp on customer service and the customer experience, and they want to build a seamless, easy transition into EV. And this is a part of it. So got to hear what they have to say and follow up on that. And hopefully, you know, they were able to really analyze this as well and then bake it into the future solutions for their network. There we go. Let's do some podcasts on resiliency and uh, talk to some experts on how to set up a network so this doesn't happen to you. We should definitely get the Circle K guys back on and be like, why are you so much better than everyone else in this situation? Because it's, you know, 100% success of charging versus zero is what we saw. And uh, just just insane that something like this could happen. And who knows really what the true issue is. Honestly, like I said, it could be something as simple as someone forgot to pay the connection bill or a hack on the system or an internal update that took everything down. It could be so many things from small to huge. And if it is a hack, which we don't know, I'm just, you know, there, there's no indication that anything was hacked. But if it is a hack, then how susceptible are other systems as well? And is this something we should expect going forwards as EV drivers? Because it just shows me that no one is even close to getting a solid, consistent implementation across the networks. Um, uh, and, and in this case, EA wasn't affected. So that's the first time we've ever done a story that they weren't the root cause of. That's awesome. And uh, props to them for having their own implementation that worked through this. So I have to, to throw that out there. But that's the end of the show. You'll see a video on out of spec reviews where I was at the charger documenting what the customer experience was as this was going on. As we get updates and everything, I'll try and package that all up into one video for that channel. Um, but just, yeah, true insanity. Yeah, thanks for hopping on, Kyle, to talk about this. Obviously, extremely relevant to our audience and the reality of owning an EV and charging on the public network. So thanks for tuning in, y'all. Uh, email us at podcast at outofspecstudios.com. Comment below. Tweet me at hey underscore Francie if you have anything, any comments on the podcast or what we should cover next. We will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, y'all.